Please excuse the mess. I haven't been able to breathe recently. There's been always something popping up every single freaking day. So now I decided, you know what? I still have something popping up today too. You know what? I'm gonna do it this morning and you know what? Screw you if people are not happy. Eventually I gotta do what I have to do. Anyway, so Pure OS version 8 beta 1 it has been over five years this operating system has been dormant. So all of a sudden, poof, this thing comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look, see uh, what's in store. So without further ado, let's dive in. So basing myself from DistroWatch, PureOS seems to be a uh, basic, well, basic, fully fledged, uh, operating system that has a live CD um, feature also based on Debian's testing repository um, it offers basically your full featured operating system you need with the office suite and all that um, it says it's active however if I go down you see the versions here but going down to the real the real piece of the meat the last stable version which is seven we're gonna be testing eight beta one is five years old a bit more but then before if you go it's been actually not that bad there's been a little gap between 1.1 and 2.0 and then it's been steady ever since but uh, I don't know and of course here if you look at the office suite you have the option of well you can look to see what kind of office there was and it looks like between six and seven well uh, you had to put it in manually but oo.o is off openoffice.org and then libreoffice is libreoffice also from distrowatch the best thing you want to have if you don't like system d is look at the init software and it's been using sysv all the way up till 2013 and now it's system d of course it's multilingual uh, before it's been English or French, uh, mostly graphical. You can see here the default desktop environment had, well, it was KDE and now it's GNOME. Great, I'm in for a good time. And of course here, if you want to know the nook and crannies to see what kind of all those basic packages, you the most, well, popular packages, you can see their versions here. So, I don't know, be my guest. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so here we go. This is Pure OS in its vanilla state. And as you can see on the left, we have the Pure Browser, the Rhythm Box Music Player, LibreOffice Office Suite, <clears throat> your file browser, and the help, and of course, all the applications. Now on the right hand side, on the right hand side, it looks like we have virtual desktops right here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's take a take a quick look. I'm only gonna stop and look at the interesting ones like uh, well, Pure Browser, and a few others, but most of them seems to be uh, all in order. Except the problem is I can't seem to yeah yeah I just it scrolls to one page and the other page only. Well, anyways, oh, so I guess this is all the apps you get. So you have Kodi, uh, which is a media center, some sort of maps, your cheese for your webcam, boxes, we're going to take that, we're going to take a look at that too. Uh, terminal, 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 more terminal, GNOME stuff, the software manager here and here. Okay, we're going to take a look at these two, and why not take a look at to-do. And just what I thought, to-do is basically your to-do list. Huh. Software and updates. There you go. Uh, you have the options here to look at your repositories and updates. How to check it. The authentication if needed. Developer options. Enab enabling this may cause instability, but I don't know how to enable it. Mm -hmm. Officially supported. And yeah. As far as I know, I have issues with my internet connection with this build of Linux for some reason. 
This could be due to my virtual box, though. I mean, well, VMware settings. And speaking of uh, internet, let's go and check out Pure Browser. What that is? What is that? Well, I guess this is going to be uh, a no internet test. So this is Pure Browser, I guess. HTTPS anywhere can detect attacks against your browser by sending the certificates to you receive to, uh, to the observatory. Turn this on? Uh, why not? It's not like I'm going to go anywhere soon. This is... No, that's just a rebranded Mozilla Firefox. Pfft, wow. Pure browser? More like Mozilla Firefox. And looks like the default uh, website is DuckDuckGo.com. And here's your start page, definitely Firefox. Okay, let's get out of here. State-of-the-art virtualization. Boxes can be virtual or remote machines. Just hit the new button to create your first one. Looks like we have, uh... Oh, well, look at that. You can, uh... Looks like you can make your own virtual PCs straight out of the go. <laughs> virtual machine, anybody? Take a look at files while I'm at it. Yeah, typical GNOME file browser. And now, of course, what is a distro review with me without my signature? What's it? What, what, what kind of choice we have as a wallpaper? And we're going to go ahead and look at that right now. Hmm, we got quite the selection. I wonder. You do have the selection, I have to admit. Pictures and colors, well, you have solid colors, but yeah, I'm liking this. Let's go ahead and select that. Okay, changes, yep. And lock screen changes throughout the day. Well, that's not bad. So your lock screen does change every once in a while. Nice. Uh, before I go ahead and wrap things up, I need to check, well, this area anyways. Wait for it to pop up. Look at the terminal. And of course the system monitor first. And see how much uh, we're using in memory. Resources. Well, that ain't great. So yeah, Gigaram out of the box. And this is what you have. 75% <laughs> of RAM, 66.9% of swap. At least it does use swap. <laughs> But that is not the best situation. I think 2 gigs, you'd be able to get away with it. However, it seems that every time I look at HTOP, it tells me something different. Well, that's not going to work. Top will. Uh, yeah, this basically tells me that you have 108 megs, well, 106 megs of RAM free 620 is used and the rest is all in cache so I guess the other one calculates that or well discards that so there's actually less free than I thought so yes if you do consider trying this operating system out consider a minimum of 2 gigs of RAM and with that said and done let's wrap it up oh boy yep that's been pure OS 8.0 beta 1 and how does it rate? Uh, how does it scale on my rating system? Well, let's check it out. As for out of the box experience, it is a very clean look. It is very clean. Everything's well and organized. For some odd reason, it looks like I had uh, recording issues where I didn't record the bar at the top. But uh, eh, I'm sorry, I have to apologize for that. But actually, at the same time, it actually turned out pretty good. So, out of the box experience. It's complete. You can use it straight out of the box. Not even use the internet. It's a it's an ape. Ease of use. Well, it is GNOME. If people are used with GNOME, it's gonna be very easy to use. If people are not used to GNOME, especially GNOME 3, there's a bit of a learning curve. But you can get used to it pretty fast and Really, it's, look, it's a Debian-based distribution. And Ubuntu is derived from Debian. So, everything Debian is pretty darn easy to use. 
For me, it's a nine. Flexibility. Well, uh, I can't really rate it because my package manager doesn't really work well because my internet connection is kaput for some reason. But at the same time, it must have, since it's it's using Debian's repository, I know exactly what to expect. It's extremely flexible. Flexible with a ten. Look and feel. It's clean. What do you expect? It's gnome no clutter it feels it feels pretty good for a beta operating system you have to remember that it's beta so we can't be too harsh on it it's not a complete product but so far so good the look and feel for me it's extremely clean look it's a 10 overall this operating system is a 9 out of 10 good look and feel got everything you need it seems stable. It is a bit hungry on the memory side though, so we have to account that, but it's a modern distro. I cannot deduct points for that because that would be, well, that would be biased and unfair at the same time. It was a bit buggy too. I mean, buggy as in slow. I don't know if it was because not enough RAM was used or because my computer was full uh, in the memory side. I don't know, but one thing for sure, I'm going to probably think about putting it into the memory site, but I did not really consider the slowness to be extreme, because it actually did it once, and then it went away, so I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, and of course it's a beta operating system, so hopefully the developers might actually like this for feedback. So if you have any questions, comments, anything I've overlooked or not looked at, or have any uh, story you'd like to share about PureOS, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And of course, I'll catch you next time. Stay bold and take care.